morning, ladies and gentlemen. I've been well, harassed a lot about um, when I'm going to finish the arcade machine. Well, I spent the last couple of days here sitting down and actually working on the arcade machine and getting it uh, finished. Um, I did a lot of the wiring a long time ago, which is like the really hard part of doing this, is getting all these buttons corrected and wired up to a correct keyboard fob. Um, I actually have a keyboard dupl duplicator in there called the uh, Ultramark iPack. So if you ever uh, Google Ultramark iPack, you'll be able to find it. It's actually a really nice device. It works really, really well. This here I also got from the Ultramark uh, website. It's a trackball, which simulates a mouse. Uh, in this current build, it doesn't work correctly with the mouse. So this is actually great for just troubleshooting and fixing it right now along with this keyboard too. This is only here for troubleshooting uh, uses, but I've actually got all the keys mapped out correctly now. So um, what I did was I found an image of Emulation Station. Um, the image is actually comes from uh, PetRockBlog.com and the version of it that I used is nice because um, it already comes preloaded with all the necessary emulators and ROMs to get the system running correctly. So then I had to go into there and really configure the files inside the uh, emulation station because like player two wasn't configured correctly and um, there was no actual way to configure it. So I had to actually go into the actual system files and work my way down into it. Uh, I scaled down a little bit because I was gonna originally build the entire system on a Windows uh, computer, but I decided that with the Raspberry Pi coming out, and actually it was uh, my girlfriend's idea to use a Raspberry Pi in a project, and I was just like, ooh, Raspberry Pi, let's try it out. So um, I actually scaled down considerably and decided to go with Raspberry Pi. Uh, I discovered a couple little glitches that the Raspberry Pi can't play the, the ROMs that I have currently, but almost 90% of the ROMs, except for my main ROMs, my main ROMs are my biggest problem right now, but I've actually learned that it's due to the format of the ROMs, so I actually have to just re-download all the ROMs in a different format and it will work, because I've actually found some already and tried them out and they work great. So uh, we will just cut directly to booting the system and playing a couple of games on it, and uh, we'll show you that. So the first thing you're going to notice when I start booting this up, I'm just going to have to crawl under here and get everything turned on, is a little Raspberry Pi board. It doesn't have an on switch, so I actually directly have to plug it in. A little bit annoying, but at the same time, it's not like it's hard to do with my current setup. So I changed a lot of the settings on this myself and reprogrammed a couple of configuration files. So I figured it would be just suiting since it is my arcade machine get a little closer here to change the splash screen a little bit and my ego is boasted with this splash screen because I just threw my name on it that's all I did but hey I built the arcade machine from scratch I tweaked the software even though somebody else designed the software I tweaked the software so it's a retro Pi projects for the Raspberry Pi programming projects for the Raspberry Pi and it will go through the entire boot state. And like I said, the software is known as Emulation Station. They actually have a Windows version as well. I'm actually eager to try that out on a bigger machine. That way I'd be able to get a little more power out of this, but eh. For what I'm going to use it for, it is perfect. So I'm going to scale in here. So as you notice here as I scroll through the menu, so this is the, U, the GUI, I can actually go through the menu of different uh, emulators I have um, loaded on there as well as, and actually a lot of these emulators are actually preloaded. Like my Super Nintendo emulator didn't even pop up until I started loading games into it. And so as you can see, I loaded 763 games into this one. It actually shows you right down here. Um, the is really intuitive once you get it running. That's the tricky part. I uh, spent hours trying to get this running. It was a, a good two day project, but honestly the cabinet itself took me a few weeks, uh, actually a few months to build. So 
it, it was it worth it definitely to spend two days just you know learning the ins and outs of linux a little more than i do and uh running this project so uh whoops sorry about that and i will just set this up and i think i'm just gonna launch a super nintendo game so like I said before, my keyboard was not, my keyboard duplicator, and my keyboard duplicator is actually designed to uh, go through all of the systems and mimic a keyboard, right? So if I push like the A button on this keyboard, it'll actually do a command that it's on a keyboard and think it's like the S button or the X button and then map them all out on the actual keyboard itself. So I can actually go through here. The nicest part about this uh, emulator, oh, I just realized I have very reflective uh, screen. <laughs> the nicest part about this emulator is, about the IPAC uh, keyboard duplicator is, and I can just move this back a little bit and show you some guys, is that if I hit both the start menus on player one and player two, again it I had to hold it <laughs> so uh, if I hit both those menus and hold them it actually executes the escape command on the keyboard which gets me back into the actual system itself and then I can just use the actual controller here to uh, go through it and like this this control is just mapped to up down left right so on my keyboard keys these keys up down left and right are the exact same keys here. So this is just simulating keyboard strokes every time I hit a button. And the nicest thing about the, that's my 360 controller I was using to debug some things. The nicest thing about this is you can just kind of go through it and hold. After you hold for a little while, it'll actually speed up and zoom through a lot of things. So the trickiest part about this is, like I said, player two is not set up. So, to go through everything, I'm going to actually go Super Mario Bros. Mario Kart. I still have Super Mario. Super Mario Kart. So, because I get to show you off all the keys, how they work and everything. Um, it wasn't set up, so I actually had to program line by line each key for uh, player two. But once you get it running, it's actually very intuitive. I'm going to go battle mode, then I can show you. Two player game battle mode, yes. So this is player one moving around here. This is player two moving around here. And you'll notice I have X, Y, Z, or sorry, A, B, X, Y, L, and R start select on the uh, actual control board, as well as mouse keys. Um, it helps. It's like perfect for the controller setup, especially for like the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo. A lot of arcade games don't use much more than this. The black button actually is the coin button, so if I'm on a MAME uh, system, like an arcade game, I can actually just tap this button and add more coins. Uh, so let's just go over and select some random guys. It's Mario versus Luigi. Okay, let's start again. So like battle course three. It changes the course. Would you like this one? Yes. So as you can see, Luigi's on top here, left and right. And Mario's on the bottom, left and right, for player two. So I can get this guy running. It just need me using the Super Nintendo setup. And yes, actually I do own this game. On my personal Super Nintendo. Alright, so, and if I use the uh, L and R buttons, they jump. Or they power slide. This button should be the shoot, which it did. And this should be the brakes. Yeah, that's the brakes. So, honestly, very easy to play on the main style desk. So, 
and I'm going to now show you player two. This should be the shoot button, so I'm going to drop some bananas. There's my banana. And brakes. And then power slide. Power slide a little bit too. Yeah. And then these can jump as well. So if you get yourself stuck in a weird little corner, you always have to end up jumping into a circle. There's no backup like in the later games. And let's kind of shoot. But yeah. So once I hit both start buttons again. And hold it goes back into that so then it's going to run a little bit of code get a little scurry but it'll boot back into the front end and i can use the b button to exit out of menus a button to enter into menus um i started the game again whoops hard to reach over top of that while the camera's in the way. So B exits out. Start brings up the menus so I can actually adjust the sound up and down. I can change the UI, like screen savers and everything like that. So yeah, I got it finished finally. It's all running off the little itty bitty Raspberry Pi. Uh, actually really impressed with it. It took me a couple of days to get programmed right, but yeah, it worked great.